Hey guys, today we're going to be going over the installation of our newest Dakota house, a 16 foot wide Dakota house. We're adding this to the, the Dakota series that already includes an 8 foot, 10 foot, and 12 foot version. Along with the 16 foot, we're also adding a 20 foot Dakota house. So in this video, we are going to discuss a few of the things that will be on your 16 foot Dakota house and your 20 foot house that will not be on the 8, 10, or 12 foot houses. All right, guys, so now what we're doing is we're actually squaring up the greenhouse. Now, since it's a 16 foot wide by 16 foot long, this point right here is actually the high point of the um, house because there's an 11 inch slope right now. So what we did is we went ahead and put our corner post right here, our ground stake, measured 16 foot across. And then if you see right here, the diagonal strip that we have going across measuring tape. That diagonal, which we provide for you, actually needs to be 22 foot 7 inches. And whenever you meet that diagonal on both ways in almost like an X, then it's going to be squared up correctly. So now that we got the greenhouse squared up on all four corners, we're going to start driving the correct depth. As you can see, we're actually working on a 22 inch slope right now, which is a lot for a 16 foot house. But um, our guys are making it happen and what they're doing is driving down. That way it goes completely level for the homeowner. All right, so now we've gotten the greenhouse leveled up. What we did is we stretched lines all the way around the perimeter and set up the levels to where it needed to be. And then we went through with a can of spray paint every four foot since it's on four foot centers. And if you see here, we marked every four foot and that's where our ground stakes are gonna be going. All right, now as you can see, after we've got the ground stakes in the ground, it creates this mushroom on the top. Not a problem. What we're gonna do is you can either take a sawzall or a bandsaw, and we've already made our mark, and we're gonna cut it flush right there to where it's a fresh, new, clean looking cut. All right now, what we're doing now is we are actually assembling our bows, and it's a three-piece bow. And you need to try to lay it out on as much of a flat surface as you can. And as you can see right here, at every single swedge point, we're putting in a total of two of the tech screws that are provided. All right, right now what we're doing is we're putting the bows into the ground stakes and to make sure that everything is still level, we've marked six inches from the bottom up here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide that bow straight in there and then we're gonna shoot two tech screws in there. All right, since now we're doing our purlin, we laid out a purlin pipe and we attached it with two tech screws right there at each joint. Now on every single bow, you see we made a mark. So whenever we're putting our purlin up, it's all gonna tie together and it's gonna be a lot easier and look straight. All right, so right now we're hanging our purlin and right here on the end, we use a one inch two hole strap right here. That way it doesn't rub the poly. And whenever you're hanging around upside down, it's a lot easier to put a little pre-drill right there with the tech screw that is provided.
Now, when doing your side purlins right here, what you're going to do is on the end bows, you're going to use what's called a two-hole strap, and that's a one-inch, and you use a tech screws. And as you can see, you line up your purlin with that seam right there. That way, it's uniform all the way the length of the house. Now, whenever you get it up there, you're always going to shoot a tech screw right in the center, pointing down. That way, over time, it doesn't slide. Now, on your other bows, you're going to use what's called purling clamps or cross connectors. And as you see, they've got them tightened down, and then they've got a tech screw right there, zipped in, pointing down. Okay guys, so on these 16 foot Dakota houses, what we've had to do here is we're gonna add a little gusset and a truss to help disperse the weight for the width of the house. What you wanna do is go from the top of your ground stake down here, and we're gonna measure up 52 inches. When we get to 52, we'll make a mark on the pipe. We'll take our tension band, we'll go over the pipe there. Make sure on the outside of your house that you have the flat side of the tension band facing the outside of the house. Once that's there, we'll take our gusset piece, we'll get a nut and a bolt in it. Got it? There you go. Get started. Okay, now when we do our top part, we won't have to worry about a mark because the length is only going to let us cover so much. We get the bottom of the tension band again, add our mark. And then we'll set the top of the brace. We're going to take our, our half inch socket and tighten those down. And then on the back side, especially on these end bows, on the back side facing the inside of the house, we'll put a tech screw to make sure they stay in place permanently. Okay guys, so along with the gusset that we've done on the corner, we're adding a truss to the 16 foot wide Dakota house. And this is on the, only the 16 foot wide houses. Again, for weight distribution. What we wanna do is again with the tension bands, we wanna make sure the flat side is on the outside so that we don't rub our end films. We're gonna get a level, and this is a six foot, flattened and punched. Now once you have it up here, if you've got it level, that's going to be your placement. We're not going to worry about a measurement from peak to end. We just want the truss to be level. Once you have that secured, you'll go through with the nuts and bolts again. Once we have those tightened down, once more, put the tech screw on the inside of the bow facing away from the end wall film or the main film on top. And we'll put a tech screw there to make sure that maintains its position permanently as well. Now with this particular Dakota house, we are building it on a slope. So we've not laid the wood, what we would say is lay of the land. We are building against the lay of the land. So we've ensured that our baseboard here is going to be level across. If you do build your greenhouse with the lay of the land, you would just let the board go down with it. And then when you made your measurement from your 36 inches for your roll up side, it would be the same as if you leveled it out you would want the same 36 inch gap down the length of your house, no matter what your slope or level may be. All right, now on this Dakota house, what we've done is we're gonna add a roll up side. Now with the roll up side on the Dakota house, it's gonna be a 36 inch opening for passive ventilation. So what we're gonna do is to make sure that our board lays level the entire way across. We've mounted the baseboard level with the ground, and then we've run it level down the length of the house, so what we're going to do now is to ensure that the board stays level and our opening stays level for our roll-up side. We're going to mark at 36 inches on the, on the ground stake. Everybody pay attention to what they're... Now with that mark, we'll hang the bottom of the 2x6 board on that line, and that's going to leave an even 36-inch opening down the length of the house for your passive ventilation. All 
All right guys, so now we're working on installing the end wall kit. And this is gonna be the opening with our 36 inch storm door. So what we've done is we've laid our measuring tape from the outside of the ground stake to the outside of the ground stake at 16 feet. Now once you've laid your, your measuring tape out to your measurement of, of the width of the house, this one being 16, we found eight foot is the center of our house. So we've come over 18 and a half inches in either direction from center. Now for a 36 inch storm door, this will give you a half inch in either direction so that when we use the one and a quarter inch ground stake material or the end wall material, that's going to eat up that extra space so that your screen door fits in there nice and tight. <clears throat> All right guys, so for our end wall kits here, what we've got, it's gonna be a seven foot vertical and it's gonna come with a one foot extension piece. It's gonna have a, a one inch splice already tech screwed to one part of it. You'll run that in and you'll set it with two tech screws to the upright. It's gonna give us eight feet. So we're gonna take our ground stake that we set, we cut the excess off the top that kind of mushrooms out when you beat on it. You'll just take your upright, you'll go right over the top of that. And then when we get up to the top here, we're gonna slide the tension band inside. We will make sure our tech screws are not facing the outside. So you'll see we're pre-drilled at the top. We'll get the tension band slid in, put a nut and bolt through that, and that's gonna secure our end, our end walls. Okay. Now guys, in your end wall kit, you're gonna have to get your lumber. And what we use is a two by six. Now they've already cut and measured to fit in between your ground stake for your bow and your support for your door. So you're gonna fit these flush with your other board and your end wall here. You don't want this sticking out on the front. You want that to be flush with the ground stakes and with your bracing over here on the other side. We're gonna use L brackets on the top of the board. And we're going to put a screw, we're going to put screws in the wood, and then we're going to put tech screws into the pipe. Again, for the wood, we're going to use wood screws. For the metal, we're going to use the tech screws. All right guys, so one thing I think we missed when we discussed this wire base going on, what we wanna do is start at the bottom of your hip board here. And that way, when we start there, we pre-drilled the holes and we wood screwed in, and now we're gonna come over the top of that to the actual bow itself. And that's gonna make a smooth transition. It's gonna keep us from having any rough edges, tearing our film or anything unnecessary like that. We wanna run our six foot section up and you're gonna grab this and manually bend it over the bow. You're gonna put tech screws in it the whole way, about every 12 to 18 inches uh, and that's going to hold it all in place here on the bow. The same way that we bend it and manually bend it around the corner, we're going to do the same thing way up here at the peak. Mark's already bent it around the top and he's secured it. They've cut a piece to fit there between what they've already run up the other corner and from the peak piece there. Okay, now continuing with our wire base here, we want to make sure that we leave a gap here in the end that's about the same width as our channel lock here. And what we're gonna do with this base is go with the top of the hip board and we wanna run this all the way down. Now, you wanna make sure you're using wood screws for this connection. So what we've done is we've gone ahead and used a tech screw or you can use a drill bit if you have one on your site to go ahead and pre-drill through the aluminum channel and that way the wood screw shoots straight through to secure it. All right. So once again, we're gonna have to do wire base on our timbers here at the base of our end wall kit. Now we went ahead and we pre-drilled a piece like this. You can cut a piece that fits all the way in between. This is just a scrap piece we have right now. Just like with your hip boards, you're gonna to wanna to mount this at the top of your board. And you wanna stop shy of your vertical for your door frame. Now the reason we're gonna do that is we do not want wire base on the door frame itself. Once we have the end film hung, we'll cut an X in the door. And when we mount the screen door that we're gonna be using, we'll use the framing of the door itself to secure the film to the upright.
All right, guys, so we're hanging the end wall film here. What we've started doing is securing the film to the peak. We've left roughly eight inches to a foot hanging over up here. Uh, you'll make sure you have enough to pull and get your tension. Don't pull too tightly. What we're wanting to do is just pin the film up for now, okay? Now that we've done that, we've leveled out. You see Sun Master written here, and we have seams. We want to make sure that our film, so we can draw it the tightest and the cleanest possible, we'll make sure that all our seams come flush across, that we're level, and that our Sun Master or any writing that may be on your end wall film is also uh, horizontal and on the outside of the house. All right, so what we're doing here is they've gone ahead and laid out the main film down the side of the house. We're gonna get some guys with brooms on the inside to push up, keep it off the purlin and everything else. And now we've got it set aside so that the Sun Master again is facing the outside and that we're gonna be able to read it the right way. This is just to help make sure we get everything squared up. So you'll see Bob here on the inside, he's got a broom. And he's gonna keep pushing it over the bows as it tries to sag on us. We got another guy going in on the inside with a broom. And we got guys going up the ladder, so it's going to be pulled over the top and you're going to end up with about two feet on either side of your greenhouse so that you can get tension and make sure that you got it properly fitted. Now keep in mind that our film does expand and shrink like all materials with the weather. So what we want to do is today we're going to be right around 65, 70 degrees for here in Middle Tennessee, that's middle of the road weather. So we're going to make sure that when we hang this, we're not going to pull it so tight that when we do hit those really cold sub-freezing temperatures, that when the film shrinks, we don't want it to pull itself out of the wire channel. So make sure you do get it snug, but we're not trying to make a drum top here. Okay, so as we're securing the main film, I just wanted to mention one thing. We took this trim off of our end film, and we want to make sure that when we lay our end film over the top, that this loose piece that you've trimmed off and left about six inches of, we want that to be on the inside. And that way when you bring this over, and we do the trim here, that's gonna lock that in and keep any leaking from going through the house there. All right guys, so again, just like we did with our end films, we're making a trim here. We're gonna leave a little bit of a flap six to eight inches. Uh, again, I use my pinky as a guide against the base and I go in and that way you stay off your end film if you hold your main film out and you just run down the whole bow. That's going to give you, ah, if I don't fall flat, that's going to give you a pretty good straight cut and leave you roughly six inches hanging off the front end. Okay guys, so we're prepping the roll up sides now that we've got our main film on. What we wanna do is we want to come below our baseboard and leave about a foot is what I've got here. Now what this is gonna allow us to do when we do the roll up side is we're gonna cradle that inside. So this will give us enough excess to pull the pipe and cradle it on top of the board, get our clamps on it to hold it to the pipe. And we just wanna make sure we get all this excess out of our way and leave about a foot out here. All right guys. So as we were talking about before, we trimmed off some excess. We still got a little bit to go here. Uh, we're working against the grade here, so we do have a bit more to trim off on the inside. But the general idea is we want to get your roll-up side pipe here. We've gone ahead and tech screwed it together. That's two tech screws per joint where you put the swedged into the saw cut. Once you've done that, lay that pipe on the inside of the main film 
wrap it over it, and we're gonna do what you know we call cradling here. So we're gonna work this pipe down against the top of your kickboard, your footboard, and now from the inside we'll work it up and smooth it out. We'll have somebody on the outside pulling the wrinkles out of the corner, and then we're gonna take snap clamps and one at the ground stake. We're gonna put that on there. Snap that on, and that's what's gonna retain the film to the roll-up side. All right, guys, so when doing your roll-up side, they do go together with the swedge and the saw cut pieces, just like your bows and everything else. We're gonna to have to put a spin handle inserted into the end of the pipe. It will not fit with the swedge still on the pipe. So we're just gonna take this crimp, we're gonna come about a half inch behind it, quarter inch behind it, and we just wanna cut that off flush, making sure that we stay far enough off the house so that we don't rub it with our spin handle. Okay, now when we talked about the spin handles here, we want to make sure we're a little long here off the house. When we trim off any excess here that you may have with your kit, what you don't want to do is be within a foot of the house. If we can stay 12 inches or a little bit longer away from the house, it's going to keep us from tearing the film there while we roll up the sides. Alright guys, so with our spin handle assembly, this uh, with the sleeves here is going to act as your handle. It's going to allow it to rotate for you. We're going to take this side and we're going to insert it into the 1 and 3 8 pipe. We always want these facing the inside of the house. It keeps it from being a trip hazard outside. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna end up putting two tech screws into this six inch bar, and that's gonna give us our handle for rolling up the sides. Okay, so with our roll up sides, guys, on every bow, we're gonna do some wind strapping to help secure our roll up side to the house. Other than that, it kinda blows in the wind. So what we wanna do, John here is gonna fold this over two times, and that's gonna create a little bit of a buffer to keep that strapping from tearing. We're gonna take a uh, wood screw and one of our flat fender washers and then we're going to secure that to the top. We'll go ahead and come down here, we'll fold it over twice and we'll put another wood screw and then we'll do that for every single bow going down. Okay guys, now we're going to talk about our wind strapping here. Again, just like uh, we use the wind strapping on our roll-up side to secure the pipe, we're going to use wind strapping over the house. Now on a house this size is a 16 by 16, we're going to go ahead and do every single bow. On a longer house, 20 foot longer, you can go ahead and do every other bow. On this one, we just went ahead and did every single gap. So what we want to do is we want to do our double fold like we did for our roll-up sides. And we want to put a tech screw and a fender washer through. We're going to go completely over the house. The point of this is to keep the film from moving around too much and rubbing any holes here at our bins. And so we want to pull a little bit of tension on it. You can see we've wrinkled the main film a little bit, but again, we're not pulling tight like a drum top. We still got a little bit of looseness here. We just want it good and taut. All right guys, so in preparation of installing our storm door here, what we've done is I've taken the excess from our end wall. We've not trimmed any of it off the bottom just yet. And that's going to give us just a place to make sure we keep our foot and keep some tension here while we make this cut. Now I'm just going to show you here what we're going to do when we get the door over and get our measurements. It'll be more exact. But what you want to do is you want to start and where your door is going to where your door is going to be at top, and you'll just take your knife and you'll cut an X across the rectangle, corner to corner. And that way, you want to leave those pieces. When we go to hang the screen door, we'll have somebody on the inside pull those triangles that we've created by cutting the X and that's going to keep the tension on our end wall here as we install the door frame. Again, no wire base on the uprights. We're going to use the door frame to keep that tension. Once we tech screw through the door frame, that'll act just like our wire base. Okay guys, so we're hanging the screen door in here. We went ahead and cut our X in the film. That way it's left us with a nice triangle. We can pull on the center, high, low, however you need to do it to get the wrinkles out of it. What Kevin's doing up here right now, he's securing the header. Now that we fit the door, we know exactly we had to come up a couple of inches off the ground because we are fighting a grade. So make sure when you hang your door, you leave enough room on the bottom so that you can open it to the outside. So now we've got our frame up securing our film. We've got the drip edge that came with the door and the film is gonna be sandwiched between the drip edge and the header that we're installing. Mike has kept his hands on the film here the entire time, which has kept it pulled tight down between the drip edge of the screen door and the header.
Okay guys, a couple other things about this house that we had to do. Now, when we sell a greenhouse kit to you, what we suggest is that you uh, get a little bit more level spot. Now this is built on, on quite a bit of a grade here and it's only 16 feet long. So what we ended up doing is quite a bit of customization you'll see in this video. Now you're welcome to do any of the things that we've done in here. Uh, we're not gonna cover them in the video simply because all of these customizations were done on the fly on the job site. This is just an example of what you can do if you don't have a quite level spot or a low enough grade. All right guys, that was our 16 foot wide Dakota series greenhouse. Thanks for watching.